All right, today it's fixing the sparkling machine. So we've got seven of them. So the way this thing works is that you have here a little tank where you put the powder. Then there is this uh, endless screw in here that is driver, driven by this motor that push the powder inside this hole. And then in here, where uh, this is a heater that uh, heats up a lot, just like a fog machine, for example. And then, since it's not a liquid, it can't, unlike a fog machine, it can't be pushed by the pressure. So, you need to be pushed by this uh, gear here, which is another larger endless screw, so that the powder travels all the way to here, and at the end, it's very, very hot and sparkling like crazy and then it just go into this tube where there is a blower here blowing a lot of hair through here and push the particle up in here there are not a lot going on in here just one, two, three motors and a heater the heater controller I think and it's testing time Here, cable, plug, let's go. So they are getting warm, this one is almost ready. This one is not getting warm at all. So I think this one has a heating element issue or the heating driver, the heater driver is bad. This one is fine. This one is good. Now on this one, I don't know if there is still some powder. Tank is full. Very cool. Now last one. Alright, cool. So all of them are working. This one has a heater problem. Right here. Looking pretty good so far. So here it is. I need to disassemble it. And I don't really know where to start. You can see some screw here, but that's probably for the grill here. So the same thing on the other side. I'm pretty sure it's with the screw on the back here. But I need to be careful to not put powder everywhere. So it's going to make a mess. Mm -hmm. I really don't know where to go now. Mm -hmm. We need to remove the grill. No more access. Mm. It was useless. <laughs> I found something. <laughs> Hidden screw. I managed to remove it. It's just some clips. The power comes in here, then goes to this teeny tiny cable here through the fuse switch and then goes to here on the top of this board where you can see the power filter for different filtration. This is the main power supply, it's a complete module here. Then there is some kind of Processing going on here processor on the back little power supply for a low voltage probably a 5 volt This should be 12 and this is 5 volt regulator Then we have here a PTC Thermistor probably a PT100 or some sorts 
plug in into here. This is the board just under this board with the NFT cord here. We have this little motor here. On the other side, we have the fan calling the heat sink, and this heat sink is just for uh, the tank to cool down the tank so that uh, the tank doesn't get too hot, else it could uh, ignite the powder inside the tank, which would, could be very dangerous. We have some pearl MOSFETs or a uh, triac for the motor for the fan. This is the motor for the screw inside of the heating element. This is the heater controller, but it's in resin, so <laughs> I can't access anything. Or maybe I can if I remove it. It seems to be pretty easy to remove. This thing is a nightmare to work on. Like I can't remove those panels because they are screwed with that, but the screw is here and here. I really don't know how to disassemble properly this thing. It's just a mess, a huge mess. Check for an impedance between those legs. There should be a resistance value in between. And yes, we have one ohm. Oh, 0.1 ohm. It's not a lot. Hmm. It's not too complicated, but I have to figure out uh, which pin is what. But I'm pretty sure. Both of those are on the power supply, and this should be a data communication, some sort of thing. Let's remove this pad here so that I can see better. So this is bridge rectifier. And one MOSFET and probably a second one, just in here. I took one of the good one here, I'm going to exchange to change it with this one so that I can test if it's actually a problem with this board or another problem. So let's plug it in place. I got no voltage, so but I think that there is a safety if the output is open circuit, there is no uh, power going on. So let's plug it into the resistor and let's fill it up. I don't see the temperature rising. Hmm. If I test with my multimeter, I got nothing, no DC. And no, I see nothing. Oh. Why though? Now I'm testing the one I thought was bad on a good known one. And as you can see, it's getting warm very fast. So, yes, this one is good. This one is good. So, I don't know if it's rather the motherboard that is not sending the. Um, activation signal or if it is the actual heating element that is bad hmm. how can I do that I want to somehow change one of those components let's try something sketchy so I'm going to use this motherboard with this power supply here to power this heating element and I'm going to pour all of them so that I can get a temperature reading on this one. And if the temperature is rising, that means that the heating element is good. And we have a problem with the motherboard. So let's go. It's getting warm. This one, of course, is not because the heating element is here. This one is getting warm. To be sure, I will try the opposite size. So using this motherboard but this heating element that I know is good 
and if this one doesn't get warmer, the bore board has a problem. It's not getting warmer. So let's call that and let's see if the customer is uh, okay to make motherboard repair. Customer accepted, so let's repair that. So these are good, I know I can save them. These I don't have to touch. The motherboard needs to be removed, but I need a way to access it, so... But it's quite complicated, I don't really understand how this uh, thing is put together. And I have to figure out somewhere there, is ma there might be a hidden screw or something so that I can remove this panel. Yep, sure enough, hidden screw just under the powder cap. Here it is. I know I've got some issue on this board. I need to check, um, first of all, if I've got current coming into uh, the heater power supply. So I would guess these are the power wire and then the red and white are the data communication cable. So if I were to put this in here, power supply should be on one of the two pins here. So power is coming on, that's no issue. So now let's check on the communication data. But for that I need to remove the board because I'm pretty sure it's using this MOSFET to switch some stuff through this pin, but I have to figure it out. It's pretty easy to understand, so this is the power supply unit, so mains come in, comes in here. There's some filtration here for command mode filtration, capacitor, inverse current limitation, very standard, then it comes to this power supply unit that might be uh, 24 volt. So it output 24 volts, then there is a regulator here probably for 5 volt for the CPU part, which is uh, probably this part here. There is a screen under here that's soldered to here. And uh, that's only it uh, pretty much looks like Arduino module. <laughs> These are the LED for the button. So this is the wireless module with this little antenna because it has it supports wireless DMX and communication wireless communication. This is the NFC card reader with a little riser here. And the part we are interested in is this part, which is all of the I.O. So all of these are optocoupler, which means that they allow communication data to come in or out via through a light signal. That way you have a proper isolation between each part. And then we have the switching MOSFETs here to switch each part, each motor or each section. I can't trace the signal pass because the uh, the current doesn't flow. There is probably a layer of isolation or probably a layer of flux. So um, to control that, I'm going to heat up each solder point so that by reflowing them, I will probably have a better contact with my probe. Wow, it melts so badly. What? This solder is not very good. Oh, it's a very very high temperature solder. I will try to crank up my soldering iron up to 450 degrees. Wow, well, listen to that noise. Wow. Man, I don't know how this solder is very well. Like, look what it's doing. <laughs> 
Alright, so I figured out that the pin are connected through this optocoupler here. And I'm pretty suspicious that this little optocoupler is going bad. Because uh, after it's directly connected to uh, the main circuitry. Hmm. Fortunately, it's not um, through hole type optocoupler because I've got a ton of them in spare. But does one in SMD component? No, I don't have. Or I could put together um, a replacement with a package like those. But yeah. First of all, let's choose a ground. I'm going to use this ground here for the DMX input output because it's a nice big pin here. And with this one, I'm going to probe on the circuits. But before that, of course, we need to power it on. Alright, let's go. So we got something. Well, no, I was measuring basically just junk. <laughs> All of the Octocooper are set on another reference than the CPU. Alright, so I selected another reference, so I'm not going to take a ground, I'm going to take the common rail for all of those optocoupler here and hopefully we have more information because that was not very helpful. Alright, let's go. No information on the first one. I tried so hard and got so far but in the end it doesn't even matter. The board is uh, fine, but the actual chip is uh, blown and I can't send any uh, signal on the output of uh, the CPU. Unfortunately, I can't repair a CPU. It's, it hosts the main program and of course I can't <laughs> change it or buy just an off-the-shelf part with the program inside. That's not possible. Probably on my like very high-end equipment or probably Martin projector, you can buy a CPU with the program in it. Or at least you used to be able to do that. Not on this one. So yeah, I'm going to change the whole board, but that's not very necessary to film that. So let's go on another <laughs> one of them because I have a ton of things to do. So this one has an issue uh, is that the the motor is not getting the proper power and I don't know if it's rather an issue on the motor or the main board or on the wiring. Ah shit. Shit. Maybe I can go on the other side. <laughs> no problem. Yeah, so I don't want this thing to end up in a total mess, so I'm going to disconnect the motor. <laughs> yeah, but... Uh, <laughs> the plug comes with it. Of course. Shit. Ah, that's very annoying. Now we can measure uh, the voltage on the motor itself. So let's go in ace in DC voltage.
23 volts, almost 24 volts every time. Now what about this one? I want to experiment some stuff, so I plug uh, this motor into this one in the dodgiest way possible. Because the cables are very short, but I mean, yeah. And that way I will be able, if this thing is still making some uh, weird stuff, well, I guess it's the motor that uh, consume too much power and the board is getting current protection trigger or something and block the voltage. I'm just guessing at this point. So now I put DMX on this one because this is controlling the motor. It will almost be ready. And now. Yeah, it seems to start very rehab. Re. Uh, rehab. Uh, it's good, it's a command. Ah, yeah, it seems to start every time. It's quite reliable. And then what do the reverse? Yeah, I've got some issue. Fuck, this thing is loud. Yeah, so... Alright, let's, let's power off this noise machine. Oh my god, this is loud. Yeah, so the issue is on the board. And, well, that's kind of a weird issue. Let's disassemble the board and, yeah, I will check. There were a lot of different cables going around and everywhere. So I marked them with a marker so that I make sure I plug them back where they used to be. That took a long time. So now, let's remove the bearing board. Again, this little connector with uh, this red glue on it just makes it super hard <laughs> whoa wait what what is that is that just like uh, for sensing the temperature inside well, it's kind of overkill and once again we have this kind of arduino module uh, screen here <laughs> the button uh, yeah, weird. Mm, but there is nothing on the back. There is absolutely no component in here. So that was pretty uh, useless. Well, looking closely at the circuit, so this is how it works. So the plug is here for each motor, and there is a separate driving circuitry for each one of them. And by the way, this I thought that this was a very old uh, style transistor, like the CAN style. It has only two connections. I think this is a safety switch, uh, a tilt safety switch, so that if the unit is uh, at an angle, it triggers a safety uh, mechanism inside so that it doesn't uh, produce sparks out. Yeah, all right, cool. And so each one of uh, those motors has its own little uh, diode here because um, motor are uh, inductive when you disconnect them they produce high peak voltage that can be very dangerous for the nearby components so this is basically a flywheel diode or flyback i think it's flywheel the right word and you have this chip here that are the actual uh, driving circuitry capacitor and resistor network are connected through this to after uh, the main cpu here and then there are all those a big resistor here. Mm, considering the size, I'm pretty sure there are some shunt resistor to measure some current, probably. They are placed between ground and the chip, so very low value resistor. It's around 0.1 ohm. So let's um, 
go on the internet and figure out what this chip exactly does. Oh, and by the way, <laughs> interesting uh, way of doing it. <laughs> that's for uh, ground, I think. Yes, that's a ground. <laughs> Boot together ground, that's uh, funny. I found the data sheet, but unfortunately it's all in Chinese. Nice. But I found a, a translated one on this website, but it won't allow me to download it without creating an account. Come on, f fuck. Anyway, I don't need the whole data sheet. I just need to figure out what uh, the pinouts are and basically just random stuff. And maybe if I need some uh, number, I can go here to find them because, yeah, I mean, it's quite obvious. The thing is that I don't see anything that can go wrong with this chip despite just this chip being bad. So what I'm going to do is just add a little decoupling capacitor in here, just to add a little bit more um, stability to the chip. So I advise here to put 0.1 uh, microfarad, so that's 100 nanofarad of caps here, and a 47 microfarad chemical capacitor in conjunction with this one. So what do we put uh, two capacitors, a big and a small one? Well, that's because the big one is not very effective on tiny little signal, and so uh, the little tiny one is very effective for those small signal, and the big capacitor are for the larger current spikes. Oh, yeah. Both of them. And I can only see a single one here. So yeah, let's put, I found this 100 nano and 47 microfarad here. Be careful with the voltage. 50 volt is uh, way uh, enough for this one, but if you take like uh, 16 volt, it will basically just explode. So be careful with that. Yeah, so the job. That's it. Yes. Nice. Let's uh, try it with the, this uh, <laughs> push together capacitor bank here. Alright, this is it. Let's go. Ah, of course, I need to plug the day motor. <laughs> All right, everything is connected. Let's try it out. All right, let's go. Yeah, it's fine. The problem is this little bastard. So I need to find another one. <laughs> yep, nice. I've got multiple of these also. Uh, I thought they were all okay, but uh, in fact, if you see only one here, that's because the other two are completely uh, broken. And I disassembled, I disassembled, I disassembled them, and it was an absolute nightmare. And of course, I didn't film anything. We just thought it was just a matter of a cable plugging in, not very needed for the video, but it's quite interesting. So it's those model here. So these are very hilly model and that's pretty easy to spot this is a very generic power supply and all the pieces are absolutely huge and chunky and way too expensive for what it is <laughs> so yes it's like all of them you have the heating element in here with the resistor here um, uh, first endless screw pushing um, from the tank that is on the top tank in here I just pop in here, yes, just a little tank here, then it goes to another bigger screw here, it's all driven by this 
big ass motor and uh, this gear here and the fan but it's more or less the same this one has a pretty interesting issue is that the screw here so it was mounted with this bracket in here and when you remove it so the element was here just through it but that's okay don't need to random screw all right but this is completely locked i can't turn it uh, so i want to disassemble it to access the screw itself because i think the metal has melted together and it's now completely stuck <laughs> So this thing is removed, so I need to keep this C-clip here so that I don't lose it and then I probably just hammer it. Well, 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 um, I, th I think it's broke, I, I think it's broken. I might be wrong but I think I can't risk this. So I'm going to take the mechanical parts from this one, put it in this one, so I will have at least one working and one with a lot of things that's going wrong. But uh, yeah, that's better than anything. And like if you look closely, this thing is just a mess. Like you got cable like that, you got this motor that is connected to the power supply through this, and then the other side is connected through a lot of stuff down to this board here but it's screw terminal and like there is a component that is not soldered and then these are connected through some terminal block here <laughs> this diode is here <laughs> what um, okay random uh, diode here too it's an absolute mess yeah Wow, it's just incredible how the thing is just a bad design, like, wow, come on, guys. So, there is a little prop that goes, probably a PT-100, that goes just inside here. And there is a little uh, play, uh, void here so that it can go through. The thing is that I don't have access here because there is a board. I can't access here because there is a blower. I can't access here because there is um, the power supply. I can't access the other side because there is a damn fucking control board. I only have this teeny tiny access so that I can take this thing and put it through this. <laughs> wow, this is so bad. Yeah, so I had to remove this board. To access uh, the little sensor crap. <laughs> to mount stuff, you need to undo stuff. Like, wow, I feel like I'm working in a car. <laughs> well, everything is plugged in, and let's see if it works. Alright, it's hot. Now I can fire it up. Let's go. And that's it for those sparkling machine. They were quite hard to work with. Even though I'm not a huge fan of those fixtures, I think they add a very nice effect on the stage. And on that note, I hope you liked the video, don't forget to like, share and subscribe, and I'll see you for the next one. Have a nice day.